Praise the Lord, saints, for this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I want to share a scripture from Isaiah 66, 1. And it says, Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me? And where is a place that I may rest? Saints, as we came in today and we started service coming in from the clouds, I'm just reminded that we serve a God who sits high and looks low. Nothing catches him by surprise. He loves us so much and he will be with us to the ends of the earth. Whether we have church in a building, whether we have church outside, whether we have church at home, for we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives within us. And we are the church. So we can have church wherever we go. Amen? So today we're going to have an awesome service. I believe, God, that the Holy Spirit is already here. He's already in our homes. He's already in our hearts. And he's going to show up and show off in a mighty way today. So let's bless the Lord together. Let's come together to worship him in spirit and truth wherever we are. Because he's an awesome and a mighty and a wonderful God. And he deserves all the praises, all the glory, and all the honor. Amen? Happy Father's Day. Well, God bless you, beloved. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice, and we will be glad in it. As we give honor to God, uh, to our pastors, and to my entire Fresh Anointing family, we thank God for allowing us to celebrate once again fathers everywhere. Go with me now as we go before the throne of grace, before our God. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, as we come to you in prayer today on behalf of fathers everywhere, we thank you first and foremost for being the perfect fatherhead to us. You are the perfect example, dear Lord, for you are the Lord that fathers everywhere. We, we, we mark the perfect man. You are the one that teaches and shows us how to discipline and nurture, how to teach, how to love how to show the light of God to our families. Father, we thank you today for fathers everywhere, those fathers who are in their homes, those fathers who are in the homes, dear God. Lord, they are there, dear God, with unwavering accordance to your word. Lord, I thank you for single fathers, single fathers who are maybe raising their children all by themselves, doing the very best that they can without complaint. Father, I thank you, dear Lord, for those men who have a heart to step into the duties of those fathers who may be absent from homes or for those fathers who are now resting with you. Would you confirm them each and every day and let them know, dear God, that these men who choose to, 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 to love and to teach and to show love to children in need, would you bless them? Father, I even pray right now for future fathers. Fathers, dear God, dear Lord, that I declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ will foster a generation of children that will serve you. Lord, I thank you right now, and I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would uh, strengthen fathers everywhere. Lord, would you draw fathers to you, dear God, with greater trust, help, and hope in you, dear God? Sustain and keep them, dear Lord, I pray in the mighty name of, of Jesus Christ. Help them to reach out and call on you each and every day. Lord, I, I thank you for those fathers, dear God, who choose, dear Lord, who choose, dear Lord, to stand. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you, that you supply the needs of every father, dear God, according to your great riches, as they train up the children in the way that they should go. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you continue to guide the minds of fathers everywhere, Especially, especially in the times that we're living in, dear Lord, uh, guide them, dear Lord. Show them the direction that they should go. Help them to cry out and to seek your face each and every day. Help them, dear God, dear Lord, to trust in you. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you garrison and sustain and hold up fathers, especially during those very trying times which will come. But Lord, dear God, overwhelm them and saturate them, dear God, in your abundant grace your peace, dear God, and hold them close in your protective hand. Father, would you remind fathers everywhere that they're not in this task of fatherhood all by themselves. 
but you are with them and you will never leave them nor forsake them, dear God. You will keep and cover them, dear God, as the provider and protector, dear Lord, as the nurturer in the families that are depending on them every day. Father, I pray a special prayer right now, dear God, that you, that you would remember and bless and, and, and remember the fathers, dear God, that do know you as their redeemer. Would you encourage their hearts? Father, I pray for those fathers, dear Lord, who, who do not know you as their Messiah, as Savior. Would you save them, dear Lord? I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, for those, dear Lord, who knew you but walked away from you, dear God. Lord, say the divine, would you restore them and return them back into the fold? And Father, I pray for fathers everywhere that you might bless them and inundate them and saturate them, dear God, in your blood that never loses its power. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon fathers, dear God, as they lead their households, dear Lord. Father, I pray this prayer because the world that you so love is in dire and desperate need of earthly, godly fathers who will rise to the occasion of fatherhood, who will reverence and revere you, O oh God, before their families each and every day with, with prayer, dear God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you remember those fathers who will raise up children. Raise up children, dear God, that I decree right now will grow and serve in your kingdom. Father, we thank you, dear Lord. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ with confidence, dear Lord, and know of a certainty that you hear our prayer and you will do what we ask. So we bless your name, dear God. In the mighty name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we say amen. May the Lord God bless fathers everywhere real good. We love you. In the beginning was the Word. God spoke and the world was formed. Heavens hung, water separated. His Word was life to Adam and Eve, protection to Noah direction and a promise for Abraham, salvation for Isaac, identity for Jacob, an inheritance for his sons, and deliverance, blessings, and warnings to Moses. His words came through the prophets, and then the word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus, God's son. His word is alive and active, and it never returns void, always accomplishing the will of the Father. It saves, sanctifies, heals, transforms, keeps, sustains, renews, cleanses, a fountain of living water, and wherever it goes, it brings life. Blessed is he who puts his trust fully in God's word and passes it to their children. God said, these words shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign on your hand, and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. When the children of Israel followed these words, there was great victories and revivals. But when the word grew scarce, from fathers not passing it from one generation to the next, destruction and death was close to follow. In this hour, we are again experiencing epidemic spiritual poverty as fathers continue to bypass the main thing their family needs, God's eternal life-giving word, the Bible, leaving themselves and their families spiritually starving to death. With the bombardment of every distraction vying for our attention, including the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and an enemy that tries to keep us enslaved, is it even possible for fathers to keep God's word continually before them and their families? Hi, my name is Ben. This is my family, and I lead a ministry called Inner City Movement. We are creating Actors Bible, which is an online tool that gives everything needed to easily enact scripture, with a vision of dads dramatically and consistently engaging their families with God's word to effectively make obedient disciples of Jesus Christ, first in the home and then beyond. I live in Philadelphia now, but I didn't always. I grew up in Leo, Indiana, where I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional home. Though we said we loved God, no one ever read his word in our home and therefore not living it out. 
We went to church on Sundays and acted like we followed God's word, but the rest of the week was hell. I grew up thinking this was how Christians live and act. At 10, my grandma took me to a large pageant play at a church. I loved it so much. It was very marking to me. I went home and took my mom's good sheets, transforming my room into a set for a play and sold tickets to my family. During my teen years, my church did large plays as well as mime skits. They always had me play Jesus, but right after I would be at a party, drinking, smoking, and acting very promiscuous. Most people in Leo said they were Christians, yet they acted like I did, so I thought I was good enough the way I was. And every time I played Jesus, it was for others to get saved, because I was good. I came to Philadelphia with my youth group on a missions trip, where we worked with Frank Vega at Inner City Missions, a ministry in the worst part of Philadelphia called the Badlands, reaching those struggling with drug addiction, homelessness, prostitution, and their children. As I spent time with a little boy named Tavon, my heart fell in love with him, the other children, the city, and my future wife, who was the director's daughter. I moved to Philadelphia with my mattress on my roof of my car and everything I owned shoved into it. I became an intern at the mission. Frank would set up large tents for outreach crusades. We noticed the youth would just sit on the front doorsteps and not be interested in coming over to the tent to hear the preached message. But as soon as Felicita and I would present a dramatic presentation, I would do mime and she would do dance worship and we would combine those to show the gospel message. The youth would come over and want to see and, and they would be impacted and give their lives to God. They also wanted to join in and be a part of the presentations. We saw that if they were going to be a part of presentations, we had to practice and that gave us an opportunity to grow in relationship with them and teach them what it meant to be a follower of Christ. So in our home, Felicita would disciple the girls upstairs and I the boys downstairs. We traveled around the greater Philadelphia area with a trailer full of staging and props to transform churches into theaters and do big productions, performances. We were training churches how they could use the arts to disciple their youth, all the while evangelizing their communities with large shows that our youth and theirs would present. We started to dream of a theater headquarters and found a 1920s, 1600 seat dilapidated movie theater in great disrepair. We were young and naive and said, sure, we can renovate it. Nine months later, after 150 volunteers working long hours each day, 10 dumpsters full of junk and dirt, we opened the theater. Still void of major systems like HVAC and sprinklers, we trained youth in theater and Bible one show at a time, one semester at a time, making very immersive walkthrough experiences, wraparound stages, and the like. The space was cold in the winter and hot in the summer, but our patrons and the kids stuck with us. We tried as hard as we could to impact these youth, but we often found that our efforts were futile when the youth's parents were not teaching and modeling God's word in their homes. I often felt like we were turning on the faucet, expecting rushing water and only getting a trickle that would then completely stop. Where was the clog? I had been a part of youth ministry for years now and seen very similar results. It was during this time that Felicita and I were saddened because we wanted children, but it had yet to happen. Finally, news came that we were pregnant. It was going to be a girl. And for the first time in my life, the fear of the Lord came over me. You see, for the last 30 years, I was playing the part of an actor. I was pretending to love God. I actually loved my sin, my secret life of following what I wanted but I knew that my sins were now going to have a direct impact on my soon to arrive daughter, and it shook me to the core. I was face to face with my sin for the first time. Though I had played Jesus hundreds of times on the cross, I never truly knew my need for his salvation. I cried out to God, and he directed me to his word. To my precious brothers, happy, blessed Father's Day. I hope that this day will be filled with blessings and provision from God. And I hope you have a great day. You deserve it. Pastor Ben Myers and Elder Dwayne Rollins are going to talk about fatherhood today. And in preparation for their talking about this, I'm going to sing that song, Father Me. Father, wrap 
me in your arms, Father, wrap me in your arms, Father, wrap me in your arms, and Father. within your arms I am safe within your arms I am safe within your arms so father me God bless you have a great day. Ben, welcome. Thank hey, you for uh, enjoying, uh, inviting us into your home, God, uh, to have this conversation about fatherhood. Her. My absolute privilege. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, you've been doing some amazing things um, with the Actors Bible and this mandate that God has, has, um, has given you, privileged you to, to work with. Um, let's start with uh, a little bit about uh, fathering in 2020, right? Mm. There's so much going on, yeah. right? And to say the least. To say the least, <laughs> unexpected <laughs> things. We were talking about our plans. My God. And how how do you see the role of the father mm. uh, being uh, needed in this time, mm. uh, where we're dealing with pandemics, where yeah, we're yeah. dealing with. Uh, judicial and civic mm. uh, issues. Mm -hmm. like, where, where do you see the role of the father mm. really anchoring us um, mm. our, in, in, in our times now? Wow. Yeah, so we see in Matthew 25 where Jesus is asked, what will be the signs of your return? And yeah. uh, the disciples really wanted to know um, because he had already told them that it wasn't now mm. that he was uh, that, that the end of the age was here. But that, so if it's not now, when? What will be the signs of it? What will it look like? And he began to describe that nation would rise up against nation, ethnos, people groups would rise up against. And this would be part of the birth pains that would be, that would lead to a great deliverance with the return of the Son of Man himself coming and being revealed. Are we there? Like, I don't know, yeah. but the birth pains are definitely sure. being released right now. Sure. These are, when we begin, like when my wife went into labor all six times, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we know what yeah. that looks like. Sure. First, there's pangs. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. it's going to be today. Yes. And then it's the contractions start yeah. increasing yeah. and they go from mm, to oh, yeah. like yeah. they take her breath away. Yeah. I'm no expert, won't, but I've been through six of them yeah. now and I can yeah. see it. And the, there's reprieve in the middle of it, right? Mm -hmm. There's this moment of let's reflect, brace ourselves yeah. for what's coming. And I believe that we're in one of those places right sure. now. Sure. And so what does the role of fatherhood look like right now? Well, before Jesus' first coming, the spirit of Elijah was released on John the Baptist, this re spirit of calling people to repentance that the kingdom of God was at hand. Why? Okay, spirit of Elijah, what is that? So it's a fatherly, fathering role of making disciples, of mm. disciple making and turning people the way from the way they were going to the way back unto the ultimate father. Sure. So I believe that in this hour, it is imperative for fathers to take on their role um, that God has you know, given us clearly in scripture mm -hmm. so that we would then be as a collective church, the prepared body of right. Christ. If fathers don't take their rightful position, we endanger the bride, right. the wives, the children, but ultimately the full, all of us as sure. the bride, understanding our role, how we're supposed to go along with the will of Jesus. That, and Jesus or the husband is supposed to lay down his life as Christ laid down his life for the church. And, and we get all that. If we get this thing distorted, we're actually distorting the image of God right. and the clarity of the role that we need to be yoked in with 
our Messiah at the end of the age that he's coming back for a pure and spotless bride. Sure. sure. So dad's role is paramount right now. And that's why it says in Mal Malachi 4, 6, that at, during the great and terrible day of the Lord, mm -hmm. I will pour out my spirit and, and, and uh, the spirit of Elijah will turn the hearts of fathers to children, children to yes, fathers, yes, lest yes. I smite the earth with a curse. curse. Right. And yes. I believe he lets us taste what a curse looks like. We're at the edges of the curse, or even the, some of the fruits of the curse, that we desire that fatherly, that, that desire wells up in us men. Sure. Like what, I have a role, I have an assignment sure. from God. I'm to reflect God and if I get this right, the bride, my bride and my sure. children are sure. impacted sure. and we're collectively prepared to say, Baruch Abba Hashem Adonai, come. Uh, mm. He who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes. come and that we're rightfully positioned. Yes. So I think it's really important, Dwayne. You, me you mentioned Elijah, and mm. I, I, just, I just, for so long, I have thought about the significance of Elijah, uh, really as a father, spiritual father of Elisha, yep. right? And, and how they, those two came together at a point of transition, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the importance of the Elijah's, mm -hmm. the, the spiritual fathers, mm -hmm. The, uh, the elders taking their place to really pull the Elishas up mm -hmm. and usher us into yeah. uh, a, a new time, right? Yep. Um, and I, I see that as now, right? I see that as there's this this colliding mm. of, of worlds now. Mm. There's this 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 where where everything is being disrupted. This is a huge time of disruption. Whatever can be shaken. Whatever can be shaken is being shaken, and there is such a need for Elijah's to, to, to speak purpose into Elisha's. Yes. Right, fathers to speak purpose into mm -hmm. sons and to really pass on the legacy of carrying the message. So uh, when I think about legacy and, and what, we are, what we are as fathers are trying to do with our children, I know with my children, uh, I'm half you. I'm three children, you're six. So you are the expert in this. Uh, no um, expert. I think about, about one of the things that's really important Important to me is passing on the legacy mm -hmm. uh, of, of the relationship of the kingdom mm -hmm. of Christ mm -hmm. uh, moving from it came from my father right I uh, I think back to the the pains that my father he was intentional about about mm -hmm. giving me legacy mm -hmm. and making sure that I knew the word and and had times of devotion mm -hmm. with me uh, he was purposeful in creating legacy mm -hmm. And, and one of the things that I see is that oftentimes we are pulled in so many different di directions yeah. that it is hard for us to reset and focus on being intentional mm. about passing on legacy, yeah. passing on the kingdom legacy yes. specifically. Mm -hmm. We will pass on educational legacy, we will pass on legacies about career and financial legacies, but so often we'll, 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 we'll spend time in saying, hey, go to college and, 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 and go and get a great degree and get a good job and buy properties, which are all great things. But I don't know if we're as intentional about giving the kingdom legacy, right? So um, talk a little bit about, about some of the things you are doing mm -hmm. as a father with okay. your, yeah. your family um, uh, about uh, to really push the kingdom legacy okay. with your children. Real briefly on the Elijah piece. Yes. When I was talking to God, I was like, yeah, studying out the spirit of Elijah, what that looks like. I'm like, God, like that is someone else fathering someone else. Yes. And, and this is, that's what we have been doing here for a long time here mm -hmm. at, at the ministry. Yes. Um, I was like, so how do, what is that really? And, and he, was, he was honing, yes, that is the spirit of Elijah, but he's like, there's something that would cause a young Elisha mm -hmm. at the age of 14, 15, mm -hmm. whatever the mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. to say, what you want me to come after you, Elijah, and to carry your, and to be trained under you, this is the highest calling yes. I'm gonna do. So something happened in that young man's home Yo. that, that wow. prepared him for that transition. So biblically, we have this model of Paul with Timothy. We have it with Jesus and the 12 mm -hmm. disciples. We have it with uh, multiple others, and Elijah and Elisha being the, the biggest one, mm -hmm. of that doesn't, doesn't just happen in their hearts, in a young person's heart. And that's where we've seen uh, with all the studies that, that show, you know, where we're splitting kids up on a Sunday morning into different age groups and segregating them away from the family is we've lost a generation. 
And the type of mentality that we've done so far is, is we don't lose them when they're 14, 15 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when the spirit of Elijah is manifesting right. fully and they're going into their calling and can be trained by somebody else, where we've lost them is between the ages of nine yes. and 13. Yes. Yes. And, and that's where the full biblical worldview is shaped by nine. And so that's where we have to really begin to ask some hard questions. What does it look like for us to begin to equip fathers to play their priestly role of equipping their own children? Who, who was anointed to disciple them? Ain't nobody better disciple than Dada. Mm -hmm. Dad, you are called. You are it. You are plan A and there is no plan B. Mm -hmm. Yes, God does, uh, you know, if, if he's not there, he does allow for others to come around. And if you're in a healthy congregation, those other men can play that part during the ages of the zero to right. 13. Right. 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 But but really a biblical model is Deuteronomy chapter um, five, five, six. It's on the wall there. Hear, O Israel, the yes. Lord our God is one. Sure. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Teach these laws diligently to your children, morning, noon, and night. And you're going out, and you're coming in, and you're lying down, and you're getting up. Teach them diligently. That's intense, God. Are you serious? Yes, Dad, your number one job is to uh, contend for your, both protect spiritually, provide phys uh, provide for them, as well as their spiritual formation. That's you, Dad. And guess who's accountable for that? That's you, Dad. Guess who'll be blessed if you do? That's you, Dad. Guess who will be judged if you don't? That's you, Dad. And so many times, even as I was working in youth ministry and, and people would, like kids would end up in jail, mm -hmm. seriously. And we would be there at the, and, and we would get a response. Well, I thought we, you know, us giving them over to you, that it was good enough. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's, that's one of the challenges yes. that, that, you know, in doing youth ministry is that yes. drop off daycare mm -hmm. mentality. That's right. And um, that we, we have them for two, three hours. If you have a vibrant youth ministry, mm -hmm. maybe five hours, yes. right, of the week, mm -hmm. and 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 there is so much being influenced mm -hmm. in the home, mm -hmm. and and one of the biggest barriers with with or the next generation is if they're not being yes. purposely, intentionally, yeah. diligently yes. taught the 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 word of mm -hmm. God, the 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 love of God, and yes. and shown the example mm -hmm. in the home, um, it's it's the breaking down of yes. of, of the of the, the lineage, right. the, the godly heritage that yes. is coming down, right? And, and so often, uh, one of the challenges that I see is, is that um, when children don't see it, yeah. right? It, it, it's tough to really get them back to yes. your point. But if you have fathers who take that responsibility yes. seriously yep. and step into that role, mm -hmm. you there. So we'll talk about the tool that we have. You you don't have to know. All you have to do is commit to it. Yep. Right. Commit to this is what we'll do. And 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 there are things around that we can. Uh, you, you can bolster your knowledge you can bolster and that's part of it right mm -hmm. part of part of taking it seriously is mm -hmm. diligent and, and being diligent about mm -hmm. it is you learning and you mm -hmm. growing um, but it seems like a good t uh, time to talk about the tool yeah. the actor's Bible yeah. because uh, I know even in my interaction with it it's just an awesome tool uh, to, to help parents help mm -hmm. fathers mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. uh, lead their families right in the word of God, That's which right. can be intimidated mm -hmm. sometimes, especially if you weren't, you didn't have the benefit and of someone to teach you. Right, right. right. Yeah. So I was driving this morning and um, God was God was just hitting my heart because I was really troubled with the African-American community sure. and how systematically like fathers were taken out of homes. Sure. Fathers were imprisoned. Well, first they were enslaved, separated from mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. and then imprisoned uh, falsely accused of mis like small stuff so that they could then continue to have them work for free. Right. And it's just, and my heart was troubled over that for the last week. And as I was talking to God this morning and I was driving the car, he was like, you know, but it only takes one. There's curses to the fourth generation. There's blessings to the thousands. And if one, if, the, if you, Father, yes. if you say it in your heart, you know what? I'm going to disciple my kids. I'm going to raise them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. It's blessings. Right. You're going to right. step into, it doesn't matter what right. was before. You, you unlock. Blessings. You just unlocked blessings wow. for a thousand generations. Right. Right. You did. So Actors Bible is a tool that allows any dad anywhere to contend for his own kids um, in a really easy, engaging, and intentionally consistent way. Mm -hmm. 
and I need something that keeps me accountable, something that my kids will want to do more than I want to do. Mm -hmm. And it's all based around getting uh, interactive and role playing uh, with the Word of God. Two things that really changed my heart is God encountered me through His Word. From I picked up the Bible with fear and, uh, and trembling hands for nine months. Starting Genesis, went to Revelations, and once I understood who God is, I had made up a God of my own imagination before then. I, you know, 30 years said I was a believer, but really I, I loved my sin and my ways. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my daughter was coming into the world that I truly trembled over my, my sin. Because I could get away with my own sin right. and I thought it was just harming me. Mm -hmm. But dad, when you realize that your sin, he holds uh, and, and it goes to the fourth generation, you begin to say, wow, this is bigger than just me. And can I share something yeah, with you? Please. So, um, I was I was thinking about that same thought as as, mm -hmm. as we were preparing for this, mm -hmm. and how having my first daughter changed me, wow. and even before I even had her. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I was in locked into a struggle with pornography, mm -hmm. right? Just bound by pornography, yes. and 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 the thing I remember the thing yeah. that stopped that broke that thing off. Mm -hmm. And it was, I was in the middle of, 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 of the struggle and, and I remember just guilt, condemnation right. was just beating me up yep. and I was like, I tried so many, yep. in the church, yeah. right? Yep. I tried so many yep. times and then, and then the revelation came, what you were doing is opening the door mm -hmm. for a curse mm. for your children. Mm. And I didn't have any children mm. then. Whoa. But the thought mm -hmm. that what I was doing yeah. was going to impact them my God. to four generations down, mm. my grandchildren, my mm. great-grandchildren mm. and their children, mm -hmm. I was like, the thought that that could happen, that yes. something I was doing was going to impact them, mm -hmm. brought me back. Mm -hmm. And it, that revelation mm. was, the, was the thing that started mm -hmm. me on my road to freedom mm -hmm. and yes. recovery. And, 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 and so uh, the thought that was really blessing me and, and really being highlight, highlighted for me was the fact that so often as, as men, we get, we get focused on the now, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we don't lift up and think legacy. We don't wow. think generational, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and what you're talking about is, is these blessed, like if, if I embrace the word of mm -hmm. God, Mm -hmm. This thing has power not only to change mm -hmm. my mind because mm -hmm. you're so right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, even in church, we yeah. are we are just living for us, mm -hmm. but just a, with a sprinkling of Jesus on top, That's right. right? But now, when you come to the realization that my sin mm -hmm. uh, not only separates me from God, but impacts mm -hmm. and brings curses, we talk a lot about generational curses now. Mm -hmm. Dad, you have the power right now, right now, yes, to break generational yes. curses. Yep. And we talk about what that, that, mm -hmm. that in theory, mm -hmm. and when we pray about that, but oftentimes we don't step into the word mm -hmm. of God and allow the truth of God mm -hmm. to break that curse, mm -hmm. right? So, so true. And, and that's encouraging yeah. to hear. And I'm hearing more and more dads like this. That's why I believe God is releasing. I believe he, he already released it. I think it just happened sure. on Pentecost yeah. this year yeah. that a revival mm -hmm. or a reformation of yeah. fathers yeah. is happening. And I believe it's an end time pouring out that will prepare for fathers to take their priestly role, their mm -hmm. pastorly role in yeah. the home. Yes. And that the bride of Christ will, as a result, be prepared. Sure. And I think it's happening right now. Yeah. I believe a spirit of chaos and disorder mm -hmm. also was released at the same time, a spirit of Jezebel, mm -hmm. uh, to counter uh, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. what was being released in the spirit. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited yes. um, because I believe it's now, I believe this is a working of the Holy Spirit. And I believe yes, as dads absolutely. understand, not just the curse of it, but oh my God, you start walking in this thing where dad, it. it's you're the one who's training and disciple your kids and you see instant results. I'm serious, How instant results the same day. Wow. Um, you're, the, you're, the order in your home is different. Sure. The, the, and, and God has given us that structure, right? The head of every man is Christ. The mm -hmm. head of man, uh, head of woman is man, and then and then the mom. Mm -hmm. And so this this spiritual authority, this releasing structure, it shifts things in the home as we begin to stand in our position. People ask me all the time, "What's your role? What's your? Are you pastor? Are you apostle? Are you?" I said, "I'm dad." Yeah. And I am excited to be dad. And mm -hmm. I believe there's a revolution of fathers who are just going to step into, "I'm dad." Right. I am dad. And that doesn't make you more 
more important than your wife. It's just a different role with sure. a different assignment. Sure. But God has given us this structure. And if we want to usher in the end time move of God, we have to get in order. Sure. We're out of order sure. right now. Sure. Sure. And so uh, even the way that we do church, even that, I mean, and God's shaken everything that everything. he, that can be shaken and what remains is his, his structure, his foundation, right? When you, when you even look at the effects of the pandemic mm -hmm. and everyone had to go home, yeah. you had to go home. Yeah. You had to spend time at yeah. home. Yep. Where, where home was a place where a lot of people just slept, got clean, ate and left. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not even yep. ate. And we were, we were at football practice, we were at school, we were mm -hmm. at work, and all these things were happening. Even church, we yep. were at church, we were yep. doing all these different things. And God said, everybody go home, yep. Every, time up, stop, go home. Yeah, so Actors Bible uh, is the whole word of God as a script. It gives you all your sound effects, um, special effects, visuals of the Holy Land where the story took place. It gives you um, a, ability to log in and, and track your points as you complete each scene, each act, with the goal of going through the entire Bible within one to three years. Yeah. So Actors Bible just takes the mystery out of how to make disciples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and so you don't, Dad, you don't have to know more than anything. You were talking about that a little mm -hmm. bit. You just have to be, have a willing heart, willing like heart. you said, yeah. and say, yes, I'm gonna step into the role God has mandated and uh, is gonna bless me as I do. And, and yes, Satan will attack you, Dad, he will absolutely come mm -hmm. up with every mm -hmm. opposition mm -hmm. to this because right here, this is warfare. Mm -hmm. You wanna know how to do warfare? Disciple your own children. Wow. And so, Actors Bible, because I'm lazy, I'm tired often, and I don't wanna, and, but I, as I began to, to find out, as I was studying reformers and awakeners and just Christianity, normal Christianity 100 years ago, um, it was normative for dad to get up an hour before his family and spend time with God in, mm. in the word and prayer mm. and then get his family up and spend time teaching them the word and singing wow. a song and, yeah. and I tried it and so I was so excited because I was like well maybe this is the one thing that was missing from my life that led to 30 years of dysfunction yeah. um, and so I was like well let me try it and so I was zealous and gathered my young family and it was horrible it was absolutely <laughs> horrible uh, I, I, I have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> I have to uh, come yeah. back and yeah. it's like all these moving parts. And so God said, yeah. cast yeah. their parts like wow. you do in the theater ministry yeah. that we've run. Yeah. And I saw a light bulb go off in their hearts. Like I'm Noah, I'm Noah's wife, I'm Ham, Shem, uh, Japheth, I'm the wicked people, I'm the pigs, I'm the whatever animals coming onto the ark. And we ran around the house, got the props, and we would just begin to go story by story and circle it after we had done it. And I would ask four questions. Hmm. What did you learn about the character of God? What did he want? What did you learn about the other characters? What did they want? How did it go for those who wanted what God wanted? How did it go for those who didn't? And based on this story, what will you obey? Right. And then the next time we would meet together, the next day or the two days after, whatever, I would say, how did it go? Mm. And we would have reward systems for participation, for, uh, and then we would also take the main point of that text and create a song just with straight scripture. Wow. And, and it would help us remember, we would make it up. So that's yeah. Actors Bible. Yeah, and I'll say, um, you know, I like you have struggled uh, on both ends, right? So I remember a child growing up with my father and my parents waking yeah. us up and doing devotions and we fall asleep, right? <laughs> yes. At six o'clock in the morning before yes. we go to school, it was horrible. Yes. And, but uh, uh, so when I when I got my family, it was like, well, maybe this is just how it goes and it just sticks somehow, right? It's like trying to throw <laughs> things at the wall because when we would gather our family together, you know, and, and my youngest, he's three, and my oldest is, is, is going to be 10 uh, yes. in December. Uh, it was chaos, and to your point, yeah. they fell asleep and sucked the thing. Yeah. Can I go? Can I get on my yeah. tablet? And and so, uh, one Saturday morning, um, my wife was gone, Shakira was gone, and I was trying to figure something to do. I was like, let's try this, and they were so engaged. Wow, uh, using technology. How how do you see the partnership of, of father and mother coming mm -hmm. together? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, some folks might feel like, hey, we're saying, hey, we're strong, we're dominant. I know you said that we're not, but talk a little bit about that role of the father yeah. and mother coming together yeah. uh, to really love these love our, our Yeah. Children. So, and I tell my wife uh, Felicita all the time, like if she was not co-laboring with me in this. It would not happen. Right, right. Husbands, wash your wives mm. with the word, as Christ washes 
the church wow. with his word. And so it's, it, yes, it's the target is the children. Right. But if we're not playing that role as the servant husband laying down our mm -hmm. life for the, the bride and washing her with the word, we're again skewing the yeah. image yeah. of God, yeah. Christ, and his bride. How about that? Okay, family, dad is plan A. It's planet why? Because he's father. Right. We didn't call ourselves, okay, right. God is father. He set it up. He set it up. And if we play our roles correctly, the king, I believe the order, divine order is gonna come. And I believe a, a Pentecost, a, a outpouring like we haven't seen, I believe it's already begun. Right. So uh, for that dad, talk to him. Uh, just yeah. minister to him and, uh, and, and, and pray for him, offer him salvation. Um, just yeah. as a spirit leads, just speak to that dad who is hearing right now yeah. and their hearts are burning. They might have not done everything right, yep. but here's now yep. the voice of God yep. calling. Yep. Yeah. So dad, first thing is repentance. It starts with the repentance. Just saying, oh my goodness, this is the cry in my heart. I hear you and I haven't been doing this. I haven't been leading my family in regular. I haven't been getting up and spending 15 minutes in prayer with God and journaling what he says. Mm -hmm. And I haven't lead, led my family in this way. I repent. Mm -hmm. I repent and God, I do it before you, but then I'm gonna go to my family and I'm gonna say, you know what family? God's been talking to me and talking to me about my role as a father and that I'm supposed to be the pastor of this home, that I'm supposed to be leading and serving in that way. And guys, I've messed up. I haven't, I haven't done that. But you know what? I know that this is the most important thing that I could ever do for my family. And so I'm signing up to do this. I'm committing to do this and I need your help. I ask, first of all, for you to forgive me for not doing this but I need your help. We're gonna start next week or, or tomorrow or whatever, and we're just gonna spend some time in the Word together. And, and I know that this is gonna change all of our lives. So I'm really excited and, and, and I, I'm excited and I, and I need your support. Will you help me in this? Um, and, and then dad, stay consistent. The enemy hates what isn't on your heart right now. This is, this is how we grow the kingdom of God. This is the number one way. Right? He said, be fruitful and multiply, have dominion over the, this is how we have, make disciples and have dominion and bring the kingdom of God on the earth, one generation at a time, teaching the wondrous acts of God from, from me to my children, from their children to the next. Dad, this is your time, this is, this is right now. So let me just pray for you. Father, we just thank mm. you. Thank you. Right now that dads, um, Father, are just trembling under the weight and the glory of the responsibility that we were created in your image and likeness. Mm. And then you said um, to represent me in my in your home. Mm. God, this is we it, with fear and and trembling. We approach this God. Yes, God. Father, we want to be image bearers and represent you to our children, to our wives. Lord, Father, we're sorry for the for the way this, oh. that we have failed in this way. Your word is really clear on this, really, really clear. Fathers, uh, uh, raise your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. This is dad's job. So Lord, we're sorry where we've stumbled in this, God. But And, and, and a lot of it's been a, a lack of just understanding, yes, God. Yes. And, and we didn't really know. And, and Father, we want to get in your word, yes. first and foremost, as men. We want to start in the beginning and, and take it to the end. Mm. We just want to learn who you are and what you require of us. But then God, uh, and thank you, Lord, that in that we are changed. Yes. We, we sign up and say, yes, I'm not my own. I'm yours, mm. whatever you want. Mm. And, and the, the life of self that I was serving mm. before, I, 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 I no longer am serving self. I'm, I'm yes. yours. Your kingdom come in my house, in my heart. Yes. And in that posture, God, I believe that right now you're, you're just yes. releasing the yes. power of the Holy Spirit yes, to no. do our assignment. Hallelujah. So yes. even now, pour out your Holy Spirit, God. Name. Pour out your spirit even now yes, that God. hearts would say on this day, I chose mm. to disciple my family yes. in, in the word of God and Thank that it you. became Thank central you. in my home. Yes. That, that even that, that act alone of just coming to gather around your word shows it's important 
to us, God. Yes, and yes. so, Lord, that that would be the statement, just as Dwayne said, he remembers that. Yes, he remembers yes. that. That was the most marking part, God, that, mm. that we as men are saying, God, you and your word mm. come first. Yes, God. Before our day, before we split yes. up and go every other direction. Yes, yes, God. And that's what screams the loudest, Father. But I thank you as we look at your word and, mm. and take it one scene and story at a time, mm. that you make us over into the image Glory of your God. son. We come broken. Yes. We come flawed. Yes, and there God. is nothing good in us. But when we surrender our lives to you and your word begins to transform us because your word is Christ yes. and, and, and we become to, and shaped into his very image and likeness. Yes. So thank you, Lord, that thank we you. just come as we are. Thank you. We yes. come as we are yes. and broken, but we are built up. We mm. are given power and might by your spirit thank and you. your word. And we are sent out like lions into yes. this assignment. So I thank you for dads thank right you. now, God. Thank you. Thank you. Being thank you. equipped, God. Yes, and I God. thank you for our shifting in the church, yes. the ecclesia, to understand this is the important thing for us to be doing, God, mm. in this hour and in all hours. Mm. In Jesus' name in Jesus we pray. Name. Amen. I believe hearts. Amen. Heard that prayer. Mm. I believe change is coming mm. and change is coming. Mm. For those who need the resource, um, Actors Bible. Yes. How can we get? How can we get? Yeah. So that's just simply Actors Bible. Yes. So you just put that in your domain search, and it'll pop right up. Yes. And you can click on that. Uh, if you want to do the 21 day challenge, uh, there'll be an option to sign that. And you'll get somebody cheering you on yep. and and mentoring you. Um, but then, if you just want to start, you, you just start, and there, you do it for 21 days. Um, you can do it without signing up, and it's free to do for those 21 days. And yeah, that's that's where you go. And there's some videos to show you how to do it. But the also cool part of having the dads uh, awakening other dads is they kind of help you through the how to tech, tech, uh, how to jump on there and do it with sure. the techn technology part. Yeah. So. Awesome, awesome. And then for us, uh, we have our men's group uh, who were actively involved at our church and building uh, some of our, our men up. And so that's also resource. Get connected. I think part of the the thing that we need as men is not to be lone rangers. That's right but to get connected, yep. to get some support. Yep. Um, I believe that there is a reformation mm. that is happening now. Um, so I thank God, I thank you for this time. Thank you, man, uh, Ben. Oh. Always appreciate when we get I love together, hearing man. your heart, yeah, yes, it's, it's one, yes, so sir. yeah. Yes, sir, so praise God. All right. Congratulations. If you prayed this prayer or would like prayer, give us a call at 215-839 8121. Again, 215-839-8121. God bless you.